Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 26th of October. It's a feria in the 30th week. It's also the feast day of Saint Chad and Saint Zed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading continues from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God. The creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence to enjoy the same freedom and glory and glory as the children of God. From the beginning until now, the entire creation as we know it has been groaning in one great act of giving birth, and not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. For we must be content to hope that we shall be saved. Our salvation is not in sight, we should not have to be hoping for it if it were. But, as I say, we must hope to be saved, since we are not saved yet. It is something we must wait for with patience. The Word of the Lord. In the Gospel, Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, we continue. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it with? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and threw into his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air sheltered in its branches. Another thing he said, What shall I compare the kingdom of God with? It is like the yeast a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, till it was leavened all through. The Gospel of the Lord. Beginning with the Gospel, Jesus presents us with two parables of the kingdom. In each case, it's a small amount spreading through something larger, producing a much bigger result or product. The first case, it's the mustard seed, a tiny little seed that a man plants. I think it's a bit of an exaggeration to say it grows into a tree, it grows into a large bush, but it does grow into something quite magnificent. And there's also this further link to Daniel, with the birds all coming to roost in the shadow of the branches, again a, a symbol of the kingdom of God. The second one is the yeast the woman took and mixed with the, the dough, with the yeah, flour and a bit of water to make dough. And through this dough, through the flour, the, the yeast all spread, so that it all grows and grows, and when you bake it you get a large loaf of bread from a small amount of flour, a little bit of water, and a little bit of yeast. And again, this is the kingdom of God. It starts very quietly, you can't see it at work, but then suddenly it grows and grows. And we trust that's the Holy Spirit at work. The first reading, is one of the last of the readings from chapter 8 of Romans, the one the chapter we've heard so much about, is about the growth of the whole of the universe, the whole of creation and its salvation. In this reading we have something which becomes foundational for the whole contemporary understanding of climate change control and how the responsibility we now recognize for looking after our planet. It says all creation is groaning for the salvation offered by God. So it's not just the human beings who are looking for salvation it's all creation. We don't know how it will grow, we don't know what the saved creation will look like. And the second half of reading is precisely this, that because we don't know what the, the end is going to be exactly like, we live by faith and by hope. We keep emphasising, we hope we will be saved. Um, it's the same as faith in a very real way. 
We trust we will be saved. We can't take it for granted. We work as if it's for certain. It's living with uncertainty again. And this is what we're called to do. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. Have hope in the Lord. Those are the two things that we're called to do. They're linked. Of course, the third thing we, we can do is the one we can do something about on a daily basis. And that's faith, hope and charity. Love. We can help each other. We can help our neighbour. We can help for this, to make our society, our neighbourhood, our community, our school, our shop, our place of work, whatever it is, we can do our little bit to take it one step forward. And that is what we're called to do. If we live by faith and by hope, then we will show what it means to us by putting our, our charity, our love, into concrete action. What it is for each of us, I can't tell you. Each of us needs to spend time discerning and saying, this is how I can make the kingdom of God real in my corner of the world. We turn to our bidding prayers. Oh, I beg your pardon. Just to make a reference to today's memorial, it's to Saints Sed and Saint Chad. Um, they were both monks under educated by Saint Aidan in Linda's farm. And Saint Chad was the one who was first of all made a bishop up north in Northumbria. They wouldn't accept him. He was pushed away. So he was sent south and he set up a new diocese in Litchfield, Birmingham. And that's why in the great diocese of Birmingham, the Archdiocese of Birmingham, the cathedral is called St. Chad's Cathedral. Going back to the Celtic saint who found he couldn't find a, make a diocese up north, and so he made it in the Midlands, in Birmingham. In it we celebrate the great fervour of the church, the Celtic church, and recognise the great contribution it made to the growth of the faith in this country and its willingness to adapt. Um, at the great synod of Whitby, it agreed to take on the, and submit itself to the authority of Rome, so to join in the unity of the church. Uh, it took an act of humility, an act of giving up what was personal, and saying, I'll stop doing things my way, I'll do things your way. Never easy, but so often the way of the kingdom of God. We do now turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, lead us to the truth. Let us bless our Saviour, who by his rising to new life has freed the world from fear. Lord, lead us to the truth. Lord Jesus, as this day begins, we remember that you have risen, and therefore we look to the future with confidence. Lord, lead us to the truth. We offer you our prayer this morning. Take to yourself our cares, our hopes and our needs. Lord, lead us to the truth. Deepen in us our love for you today, so that in all things we may find our good and the good of others. Lord, lead us to the truth. Lord Jesus, we pray that through our own troubles we may learn to feel the sufferings of others. Help us to show them your compassion. Lord, lead us to the truth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. True light of the world, Lord Jesus Christ, as you enlighten all people for their salvation, give us grace, we pray, to herald your coming by preparing the ways of justice and of peace. We live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a good day.